debate on motion number 11271 in the name of John Mason on the Belgrove Hotel. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And Mr Mason, if you are ready, I invite you to speak for seven minutes or thereby, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and may I also thank uh, the members who signed this motion, which has enabled this debate uh, to take place. I mean, I do realise that the, the subject of this debate is very much a local issue in one sense and is located clearly in my constituency. Uh, however, I have lodged the motion because I believe it has wider significance uh, for Glasgow and beyond. As far as I am aware, this is the largest remaining homeless hostel in Scotland. It also, it also has conditions which generously could be considered unsuitable and less generously grim, Dickensian, like a Soviet gulag or similar. Some of the key facts around uh, this establishment are that it is, in a legal sense, a private hotel on Glasgow's Gallagate. It is an Art Deco building. It was built in between 1935 and 1937. And I understand originally it was used for long distance lorry drivers and such like uh, to stay there. As, however, as a result of this history, it has an HMO licence for a house in multiple occupation, which might be suitable for a student flat, but which I would argue is not suitable for 140 vulnerable men. Glasgow City Council correctly came to the conclusion some years ago that such large hostels are not the right place for homeless men who may be continuing to use alcohol eh, and other stimulants. As a result, traditional hostels like the Great Eastern have closed down and alternative uses found for these buildings. And the council and others have found alternative accommodation, often in partnership eh, with organisations like Loretto Housing Association, which, for example, runs the Ford Nook Centre in Bridgeton, eh, which somewhat strangely is only some 500 metres away from the Belgrove Hotel. It caters for up to 42 men or women who have indicated that they wish to continue drinking. And they have a similar number of staff, in fact, to care and support for these people in what is reasonably modern and, I think, suitable accommodation. Other people, instead of sharing a joint accommodation, live in individual flats or some form of supported accommodation. Yet, despite all this progress, the Belgrove Hotel continues. This is largely because it is in private hands and not subject to the same regulation eh, as other organisations, for example, by the Care Inspectorate, the Housing Regulator and other regulators. I think it has been expected, both by the owners and Glasgow City Council, that it would gradually decline and fade away when referrals stopped, but this has proven not to be the case. Instead, it continues to be registered for 160 residents and to normally house around 140. I visited the Bell Grove some time ago, and the conditions, frankly, are not acceptable in this day and age. Recently, I also visited Shots and Lomos prisons, and their conditions are considerably better with ensuite facilities, which residents of the Bell Grove can only aspire to. Instead, they make do with a communal shower room that I suspect many here would refuse to even think of using. So who is responsible for all this, and how can things be improved? Well, in one sense, everyone and no one is responsible. Clearly, the owners are responsible, yet they have failed to improve either the level of physical conditions or the level of support for residents to any great extent. <coughs> Secondly, the DWP is responsible because they pay the housing benefit without any real conditions being attached. They, in turn, point to the City Council, who pay out the housing benefit, issue the HMO licence and can provide some support if residents ask. The Council might point to the Scottish Government, to strengthen the regulatory framework. Now, can I say at this stage I'm grateful to the many of those who have been engaging on this issue. The HMO staff have been very helpful to me and arranged for me to visit. Uh, the Council Licensing Committee listened and I felt went probably as far as they could. Uh, the Care Inspectorate also sought to engage but were warned off by the owners and the Minister has met with me and provided a very helpful explanatory letter. Yet, despite all this, we do not seem to be moving forward. In the year 2000, the BBC did a documentary in the Bell Grove, and very little seemed to have changed by the time the Daily Record put in a journalist undercover quite recently. The proposals of the Smith Commission suggested that some control over housing benefit could come to this Parliament, and maybe then we could impose more conditions on the accommodation standards. 
But if we are, have to wait until 2020 for that to happen, frankly, I do not find that kind of timescale acceptable. What should happen? Well, there are two clear needs, it seems to me. It, one is for the alternative accommodation, and obviously there is a cost to that. And the other is for the regulation in order to prevent this scenario recurring. There would be little point in either the Council or the Government or both of them providing further accommodation, which might or might, may not, might not be used, depending on what incentives there were in offer to the residents to stay on the Bell Grove. On the other hand, I do not want just sanctions, which would perhaps close the Bell Grove overnight, when clearly we have to find alternative places for people to stay. So it has to be both and. We do need the Council and the Government to work together. Whether it is possible for both to engage with the owners, I do not know. If the owners and management would agree to a voluntary upgrade and reduction in numbers, that would be the quickest solution, but I fear I should not be overly optimistic about that. Can I also say at this stage that I know that charities like Salt and Light and the nearby Gallagate Church eh, do engage with individual residents and seek to help them. And also I know that workers from social work, the wider medical services, Cordia eh, and others often do go in in quite difficult circumstances to help individual residents. I know as well that mental health services staff often have to pick up the pieces when living at the Bell Grove becomes too much for an individual, eh, but then they can only watch as that person drifts back to living in the same place in the same conditions. Now, I know that the Minister does not have a magic wand to sort this immediately, nor does Glasgow City Council, but we are living in 2014 and something has to happen. I have a lot of constituents who are vulnerable in different ways, but surely these 140 constituents are deserving of somebody's help. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I now call on Anne McTaggart to be followed by Sandra White. Four minutes or thereby, please. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. I would like to thank John Mason for securing this important members' debate this evening. The issue of the Bell Grove Hotel in Glasgow is an ongoing matter which is of great concern to many of my constituents in Glasgow. I believe that one of the fundamental responsibilities of a society is protecting the well-being of all of its citizens. This duty particularly extends to our most vulnerable members. The motion lodged by John Mason MSP seeks to do exactly that. In this particular case, it is protecting the lives and well-being of vulnerable individuals who have come to reside in the Belgrove Hotel in Shettleston, Glasgow. At this point, we have all become familiar with the wretched conditions experienced by residents of the Belgrove Hotel. This is a place what, which epitomises and acts as the physical definition of deprivation and squalor and is, in every sense, a modern-day poorhouse. Based on the simple reality that the Bell Grove represents a great risk to many of most vulnerable people in Glasgow, it is time that the Scottish Government takes action. It is absolutely necessary to create new regulations on establishments such as the Bell Grove Hotel so that they cannot continue to sneak by and continually pose a risk to the residents who stay there. As the motion noted, upon investigation by the care inspectorate, even after a lengthy investigation, the agency concluded that it had no ability to order changes for the hotel based on poor health conditions. To all the members of this parliament, this should immediately signal a need for change and reform to an obviously broken system. What is worse, is that the, while these horrid conditions are left un, unchanged, those responsible are swindling the taxpayers out of £1.5 million every year through the housing benefits given to people in need to find lodgings. To anyone who is even remotely aware of the issue, we know that this is a complete falsehood. This is yet another reason why I ask for the Scottish Government to create legislation to control and change places like the Bell Grove so that people cannot profit off the misfortune of others while providing utterly substandard accommodation. In conclusion, presiding officer, as a country, we pride 
which prides ourselves on looking out for all of its citizens and seeks to provide a good standard of living for all people in Scotland. It is a shame that action has not yet been taken. It is time for all of us to do the right thing and do everything in our power to put an end to this cycle of abhorrent behaviour on part of the proprietors of the Belgrove Hotel and stop pushing the problem aside. We all know that what is happening is wrong. Now let us do something about it. Therefore, I fully support the motion lodged by John Mason and look forward to helping create real change in this respect. Many thanks. And I now call on Sandra White to be followed by Alex Johnston. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. And can I thank uh, John Mason uh, for securing this debate and for his continued interest and involvement in this issue, which uh, I know and others know he's pursued uh, vigorously. Uh, as my colleague John has already, sorry, John Mason has said, it is in his constituency, but it does receive clients, uh, you know, from throughout the city, uh, my constituency, including which actually borders on the East End, uh, Glasgow, Kelvin, just off of the the Gallagher also. What I wanted to concentrate on is the basics of the HMO licences. Now, I'm, for the life of me, I can't understand how a hotel can be classed as an HMO. And I've looked at the explanation, and it is classed as an HMO. How it can get housing benefit is something, obviously, as a reserve power. We don't have power over that. But I would like, you know, questions asked of the welfare system, that how come people are spending £200 a week in this so-called hotel, it's advertised as a hotel, how they can spend £200 a week, that's £800 a month of benefit going to private individuals. And as my other colleague Anne has already said, £1.5 million is made from these individual owners and landlords. And what can only be said is a Dickinson you know, type of area for these people to stay in. There is absolutely no backup. These men are placed there, and I know that there's various reports in the newspapers. I've read them. John Mason has already read them out. Also, men lying in their own vomit, drunk on drugs. Nobody, absolutely nobody there to look after them. Two people to run this whole so-called hotel, hostel, model, whatever you want to call it, in the 21st century. Now, we are debating in this parliament private housing rent levels. And here is a private housing rent level, £800 a month to stay in somewhere that nobody would stay in at all. And yet they're taking £800 a month. In that area, in my area in Glasgow, Kelvin, £800 a month would get you a very good, you know, flat, get you a very good piece of accommodation. I would like questions asked of, as I said, the Westminster government. I'd also like to know how you can have an HMO licence in a place that's supposed to be the purpose of an HMO licence to ensure that accommodation is safe, well managed and of good quality. Now, I know that Glasgow City Council from 2010 doesn't send people, they want to send people there and they've only given it a year's HMO licence. But something has to be done to ensure that these men they're human beings, after all, are looked after properly, that they have the support. John Mason has named a number of agencies which do support Cordia, mental health charities. They do go in and try and support these people. But if you're thrown into a place like that, where nobody cares at all, all they want is the money off you, what chance have these men got whatsoever? So I would like to see letters, meetings with the Westminster Authority, one that's possibly along with Margaret Burgess, the, uh, the Minister for Housing, to ask if there's some conditions that can be put on housing benefit that is not paid out to this type of model. As I, I certainly remember in Glasgow, that's what we called it, a model or a model, not a hotel, certainly. I want to know if there's conditions can be put there that they don't receive this money. I also want to know why the Care Commission are saying that they don't look into this. The Care Commission is there to protect people. They should be going in there. There is legislation, there are guidelines, and they should be going in there and enforcing these guidelines. In this day and age, it's not good enough that people are put into an area like this where people are making a profit off of the misery of others. And I fully support the motion in John Mason's name. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you very much. And I now call on Alex Johnson, after which we'll move to closing speech from the Minister.
Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, I'm the only person who will speak in this debate who doesn't come from the area uh, where the Belgrove Hotel uh, itself exists. However, I'm keen to take the opportunity to speak in this debate for two reasons. One, uh, I want to take a slightly different approach to one aspect of it, but secondly, I want to take the opportunity to, in effect, back uh, almost everything that John Mason has said. The two points I'd like to make, however, is that there are two key things we must remember. Firstly, that the private sector uh, does manage to work very effectively in the provision of accommodation for a great many people. It operates in the areas of uh, private uh, rented flats and homes. Uh, it also operates effectively in the area of houses of multiple op occupation, particularly in our uh, cities and towns where universities and colleges uh, are a strong part of the local economy. So we have a system there that does work very effectively in certain circumstances, and one which we have to be careful uh, of not regulating out of existence. The second thing I want to say relates to the, the people who are living in the Belgrove Hotel. Now, if they are in need of care, then care is what they should have. But these are obviously people who are outside the care system. And uh, from a legal point of view, they are private individuals and they must have the right to continue to make decisions about their own lives uh, and the way they conduct themselves uh, in their lives. The circumstances they find themselves in in the Belgrove Hotel are obviously uh, distasteful, uh, unsatisfactory, uh, inappropriate in the opinion of many and on the descriptions I've heard, I would agree. But these individuals do have rights uh, and they are free to live as they see fit. And for that reason, it's important that we always remember the rights of these individuals. Uh, yes, I will at this stage. Under White. The intervention. Uh, you say that the individuals have rights, but they're very vulnerable individuals. Do you not think it's incumbent on the people who are taking the money off these individuals to actually offer more than just, it's not even a bed? Absolutely. Uh, and as I move on, uh, I have to say that within a system which has, uh, across the country, a great deal to commend it, we are doing very well when it comes to uh, ending the use of hostels uh, to deal with homeless people. We are finding ways to uh, give good quality accommodation to those who require it. But there are still holes in the safety net. There are still loopholes that people fall through. And that's why I think it's so important that uh, John Mason has been able to bring this issue, which has already been in, uh, aired in the press and on television, but bring it here to the Scottish Parliament. Because there is an obvious requirement to get much better value for taxpayers' money, if nothing else. But there's also a significant requirement to improve standards. And where standards have been approve, improved across so much of Scotland, so much uh, of Glasgow, we've even heard about how there are much better examples uh, within a few hundred yards of the Belgrove Hotel. Surely something can be done it is very difficult to pick your way through the regulations that we have in this area. However, it is surely not beyond the wit of senior, well-paid civil servants to find a way that we can do something uh, in relation to this. And I would hope that we can find a way to protect the rights of individuals, encourage reasonable levels of investment, even from the private sector, that will deliver for people who are in need of housing. But I will close by saying the same thing that John Mason himself said, and that is, notwithstanding everything I've said, surely these 140 people are deserving of somebody's help. And that's our job tonight, I think. Many thanks. <clears throat> I now move to closing speech from the Minister. Minister, seven minutes or thereby, please. Okay, thank you, Presiding Officer, and I would also thank John Mason for bringing his concerns about the well-being of the occupants of the Velgrove Hotel uh, to this chamber and the, the important subject of it to the Parliament. And as members have heard, the Velgrove Hotel provides accommodation to around 140 vulnerable men who are at risk of homelessness. 
And as John Mason's motion notes, this has been an ongoing issue for the Council for many years for Glasgow City Council. And Glasgow City Council, as Sandra White pointed out, have not referred homeless applicants to the Belgrove Hospital Hotel since 2010. But however, for various reasons, a number of men are willing to stay at that hostel and have their rent paid directly to the owners through housing benefit. And I have to say, I've got a great deal of sympathy uh, with members' concerns about the amount of public money being paid to the owners of the Belgrove in this way. But housing benefit is currently reserved and there's currently nothing the Scottish Government can do on that, that issue. Uh, and that applies throughout the private sector when we all know of um, landlords getting money for housing benefit and not keeping uh, the property the standard that we would expect. And I think if housing benefit were devolved fully, it's something we could certainly take action on. But I think as we talk about this, it is a very complex issue. We have, it's a private uh, accommodation, but it is a house of multiple occupancy because it has three or more unrelated people, uh, which can be a flat and sharing um, facilities. It can be a flat, it can be a student hall, a hotel, uh, uh, this basis or a hostel or a hostel and, and it's registered although it calls itself a hotel it's treated as a hostel and the rents are served by the local um, rent committee as well rent services and I, I've previously said to, to John Mason you know we're working with Glasgow City Council to ensure the safety of the people at the Belgrove and to look at alternative solutions for them and clearly the, the situations we've seen uh, in the paper and in the press about uh, the conditions that, that Sandra White pointed out as well. It's not acceptable, but these are people who have, have not engaged with the services or have engaged and then removed themselves from any engagement from the services. And we have to look at how we treat these, these people. We cannot force them out of th those premises or force them into something that we think would be more suitable. And I, I think the answer is about getting round the table and looking at this together and a scaling down of these premises and certainly no new people uh, being sent into them. And I've met the leader of Glasgow City Council on this issue earlier this year. And the meeting made it clear the commitment of the both Scottish Government and Glasgow City Council to address this. We agreed that any long-term solution could only be arrived at by a partnership working between us. And this has led to ongoing contact in looking to identify potential models and indeed any financial implications for providing alternative accommodation and services for the residents of the Belgrove Hotel. And let me be clear, any lack of solution is not due to a lack of commitment to address the situation. Otherwise, a solution would already have been achieved. Well, the Scottish Government will not ignore this just because it's a challenging, uh, it is very challenging to get that solution. And that's why we agreed to work with Glasgow City Council to look at how best to address the needs of vulnerable homeless people as part of their current strategic review of homelessness services. And I'll come back to this. But it's my understanding that the Council have explored a number of avenues in relation to addressing the concerns expressed about conditions at the Belgrove. And this included an approach to the Care Inspectorate, which a number of people have mentioned, who after investigation indicated they didn't have a role in relation to the accommodation. The Care Inspectorate concluded that the services provided at the Belgrove don't fall within the definitions of housing support or care home, and as such, the hotel doesn't require to register with the care inspectorate and the inspectorate has no power or duty to intervene. In arriving at this decision, the care inspectorate involved its health and legal colleagues, colleagues spoke with the police, social work and the manager of the hotel. It also concluded supporting staff from other organisations, consulted supporting staff from other organisations engaging with residents of the hotel. And the care inspectorate will review its decision if the hotel functions change. Further inquiries have also been made in relation to issues such as HMO licensing, and Sandra White was alluding to that. The purpose of HMO licensing is to ensure, as, as Sandra White said, that accommodation is safe, safe well managed, and of good quality. And the local authority has to be satisfied that the landlord is fit and proper person and that the property is being managed properly and acceptable standards of physical accommodation 
have been are achieved. And officials from Glasgow City Council licensing team have inspected the, the premises for granting the new license, and that's why the license was only granted for 12 months. The owners of the, the hotel have been given a number of um, issues to address, and they've got that 12-month period, or within that 12-month period, to look at. And it includes a number of um, things, um, standards, ratios of, of WCs, um, bath and shower provisional, electrical sockets. So all of that uh, has been looked at just now. But as John Mason um, and Scottish ministers have ensured statutory guidance to local authorities, but it is the local authority that sets the standards required and also sets fees charged in the licence application. And as John Mason noted, Glasgow City Council has granted the licence for the year, and we're looking at that, and I'm now repeating myself. But I am I'm assured that the City Council are actively engaging with the managers of the Belgrove Hotel to ensure that it does meet those licensing conditions and as I've already mentioned, I believe the best approach for addressing the long-term welfare of the Belgrove residents is part of the wider task of considering the needs of the most vulnerable homeless people in Glasgow as part of the Council's current strategic review of homelessness services. And I know that, that John Mason has been a tireless campaigner in recent years in raising the issue of conditions in the Belgrove. And I hope that today we've given them some reassurance that the Scottish Government remains committed to working in partnership with Glasgow City Council to find a satisfactory solution to this very complex matter. Many thanks, and thank you all. I now close this meeting of Parliament.